<laughs> My name is Michaela Allen. I am 23 years old and I'm a professional musician for a living. I've been playing since I was six years old. My older brother told me I wasn't allowed to play piano at eight in the morning unless I was as good as Freddie Mercury. So I kind of decided to try. <laughs> I did get piano lessons from the age of about seven to ten and then I was just completely self-taught growing up so I do say that I'm self-taught. The thing that inspired me to make music was the fact that I just had to do it. I just had to make music. There was nothing I could do but make music. I used to walk around the house singing, playing the piano, playing anything I could. It just, it's kind of an extension of my vocabulary. The music that I create is predominantly classical. So I'll see like a Beethoven sonata as a project. I'll see a Chopin scherzo as a project. Not in a regimented way, just in that I'd like to achieve it. So I got a message from Stephen to ask about collaborating and doing a video because um, I've done a few videos on YouTube with Jacob Savage um, in Leeds. And I think Stephen and the guys at Sherwood Phoenix had seen it and just kind of wanted to work with me. I love Sherwood Phoenix. It's a, a playground, like it's a piano park. And I honestly think this place should be, have like a museum status. There are so many artifacts in here. Um, you guys will probably see in my Beethoven video, I have demanded monkeys in them. <laughs> it's just like this black, you know, like this black forest artwork. And it's just absolutely phenomenal. Like I've had so much fun here and I feel so, creatively engaged right now, it's amazing. The facilities at Sherwood Phoenix are endless, like quite literally endless. You have some of the best pianos in the world and there's always more coming in as well. There's always so many different pianos too, which is literally awesome and um, bringing music to people kind of in such a unique way. It's the most unique piano shop I've ever been to. It's not, it's no ordinary showroom. And there's a, a recording studio upstairs. It's um, absolutely amazing. There's just so much, so much fun to be had here. People should visit Sherwood Phoenix despite not being musical. You could be tone deaf and have a fantastic time in here. <laughs> People just should come and see it. It really is a special place. My favorite piano to play. Oh, oh that's a really, really hard one. I, it would probably have to be my little, um, my Furyk at home. It might be a Furyk. I don't know how to pronounce it. Furyk. Furyk? Furek, but um, it's a little baby grand and I got it for my 18th birthday and it's my baby. <laughs> I've played some pianos recently in actually Sherwood, Phoenix, where I am right now. There are some white pianos. There's a white Furek. Um, it's not necessarily the same tone as mine at home, but I want a white piano. I want a white piano. <laughs> I also um, played a Rosewood Steinway, which is in the showroom as well. So all of these are in the showroom. I just, oh, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> My creative process is effectively lots of thinking about what I'm doing, lots of refining, lots of procrastinating, if I'm completely honest. And eventually it all just culminates. It's just a huge bubble of stuff that just comes together right at the end. And it's just so much, it's, it's a lot. I put my entire soul into what I do. I only usually practice for around two hours a day. Um, anything else, it just feels like too much. I'm very extroverted and I need to be around people. So being a pianist, that's being in a room on my own for a very long time, I can only really do, I could do six hours, but I will only do that length of practice if I'm really training for a concert. I don't, I do not pertain to kind of the, the ideology of you must be a perfect classical musician, you must be this, you must be that. The message that I would give to my fans is perfect isn't perfect because there's quite literally no such thing. It's a concept and it's a construct that we've actually invented as a society. If you make a wrong note, who cares? Seriously, you're here once and beating yourself up over mistakes is just not helpful. Learning from mistakes and thinking, how can I make this sound good? How can I grow? You can translate that into your life. You can translate that into any aspect of life. There is no set way to do anything. You are your own person. Who would I most like to collaborate with? Everybody who I'd like to collaborate with is dead, <laughs> quite frankly. So, I mean, Rachmaninoff, I feel like his brain would be fantastic. 
In terms of contemporary composers or musicians, effectively anyone, honestly, I would love to open for a band like Bon Jovi or even like, I don't know, Skepta or something. There is, oh, there's, um, I would love to collaborate with Charlie CM. CM, CM, he's um, a violinist, a classical violinist. He's absolutely phenomenal. And that would be a bit of a pipe dream. <laughs> My influences span across all genres. I, uh, I mean, Nina Simone, Professor Joanna McGregor at the Royal Academy of Music. She's a great musician. My friend Anna Llewellyn, she's a singer. I love, she influences me to write music. I'm starting to write stuff with her in mind. So again, I kind of get influences from the world around me and the people around me. If I were at a dinner party and nobody knew who I was and I had to describe who I was in my music, I would actually go in by saying I'm not a musician and just say I'm an astronaut or something. But if I did have to, if I did have to say, hey, I'm a professional musician, I would say I'm inspired by, I'm inspired by those who have come before and have invented music and have driven it forwards. When this interview comes out, how would I like people to describe me in a tweet? Well, I'd hope they'd be nice, first of all. Um, how I'd like them to respond is probably not how they will respond. I will probably get marked up on my facial expressions because I make a billion of them. <laughs> um, I would like people to be not confused by me, but I would like, I would like people to maybe tweet that I'm not one person. I'm like a bunch of different people in one. I'm kind of like split the movie. I'm just kind of a mixed bag. In a year's time, I would love to see the headline, young musician performs concert in different country. I would just really like to travel and get an international tour going because that's, that's the aim next. The most useless talent that I have, um, I don't think you can describe it as a talent, but I can like wobble my eyes and go, that you probably can't even see it on the camera but wait if i just i can make them do all kinds of things yeah it's pretty useless <laughs> it's probably not very obvious Ooh. <laughs> the most trouble i've ever got into i am um, this happened on two occasions i threw a house party when i was 14 and then 15 my parents were out of town both times, drove back both times, and I got the silent treatment. And I didn't, they didn't even have to say, Michaela, you're grounded. I just stayed in my room and accepted that I was naughty. I was just trying to be cool. Don't try and do that. If I wasn't a musician, I would probably be doing a degree in psychiatry. <laughs> um, I really enjoy sort of understanding people and helping people to kind of actualize themselves. I think as I go on in my career, I will probably be more of a collaborator um, because people are just so interesting and there's so many different influences. We're evolutionarily predispositioned to enjoy the company of others, you know. <laughs> One of my favorite moments was my graduation ceremony. I performed at Leeds Town Hall um, but I'll be honest, I was very sweaty. <laughs> it was, I was wearing like the cap and gown before going on stage, but I'd won the award for um, my conservatoire's classical course. And that was a really proud moment, having everyone watching and sharing that with everyone. I'm working on a project with, um, I call her my singer, Anna Llewellyn. We're gonna do a kind of opera favorites concert, but I'm kind of booking concerts as I go. It's very much like a, <laughs> It's kind of a play as you go gig at the moment. So yeah, I've, I do have a concert in Denver next year already lined up. So more to come. <laughs> I am most proud of accepting myself more. Um, it's kind of, it's within music and it's separate to music. I'm not, I've had to accept that I'm kind of not the same as everyone else. Um, not in, you know, an arrogant way, not in a, I think I'm this external being, like, but I do feel differently and I do see the world differently. I hear things when I'm out, you know, a chair can creak and I'll hear an A flat and it's a lot. And it also means that because I hear so much and I feel so much, 
it can take a toll. It can really make me feel like if I don't play everything, absolutely note perfect. Even though I didn't have training, any formal training growing up, I will be really upset with myself. But I've had to understand that I'm not, I'm not this perf, I'm not perfect and I'm never going to be. And the world isn't perfect. Like, I think I read it, it I have no idea if I'm right here, but I think the word entropy is kind of what I understand to mean organized chaos. And that is, you know, making something out of all of the crazy things that happen. So accepting myself and the world around me and how I see it, that's probably what I'm most proud of. Social media has impacted the music business in great ways. So music's reaching people it wouldn't have reached before. People who perhaps don't have the financial access to the arts are able to open up their phones and see things on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. It's excellent. But that's also meaning that creative people and artists and musicians and creative entrepreneurs are not actually receiving the financial compensation that they deserve. It's a job, it's a skill that a lot of people don't have and it's now being viewed as not a commodity but it, as a, an ex expectation. Things are expected to be free and that's not so positive when it's something that you're sharing with people, you know, entertainment shouldn't cost loads but there should be some pay for artists people can find me on youtube um if they type in michaela allen you can find me on instagram at michaela allen music you can find me on facebook uh, it's michaela allen pianist so what's next for me i'm i was originally supposed to go and start studying in colorado on a scholarship um in August, but that's been postponed to sort of earliest January or next year. I'm I'm toying with a few ideas, sort of just freelancing for now, um, teaching my students as well. And yeah, just keeping on building the portfolio. I think it's gonna be a very exciting year, but well, it's gonna be a very exciting few years to come.